we mentioned on Thursday at the Parsha Shia, we were talking about Amalek. We read from the Sefer Zechronos of the Pachad Yitzchok. We talk about the Skulas Habachira, the precious gift, the holy gift that God gave man that he has Bechira, he has freedom of choice. And we developed this idea during the Bereshia Shia. We developed this idea over and over during the uh, the Das Tvuna Shigurim. And we said we would continue with the Pachad Yitzchak today to finish this topic in the, in the Pachad Yitzchak in terms of Bechira and Amalek. I believe a, a notice went out last night from Shmuel that today in the Das Tavunos segment, now we finish finished the Pachad Yitzchak since the Das Tavunos talks so much about the centrality of Bechira in the system in which the world was created. The world was created for Hatovos, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu can bestow good on us. We read from Rabbi Ye Kaplan, um, Zatzal, uh, If I Were God, it was an act of love. The Rosh Hashanah created the world as an act of love so he can bestow Taiv on the Bria. Bestowing Taiv on the Bria means that the perfect God wants to do the Taiv in a perfect way. The perfect way to do it is to allow people to feel that they earned the good, not free lollipops. In order to earn the good, it means people have to make choices. They have to reject bad. They have to um, be makasher. They need to be mistabic in tov. They need to connect to the good, disconnect from ra. Choices, constant choices. Those choices are called bechira, and through that uh, and, the, and through that active bechira, we make choices that are good choices. Bezrat Hashem, and for that we get schar, and that's the tachlis habriya. The tachlis of the whole bria is the Rebbeinu Shalom, as an act of love, wants to give toiv to the bria, and that toiv needs bechira. Otherwise, it's free lollipop. So bechira is the central concept in underlying the whole system for which the world was created. Anything that undermines Bechira, any theology that, that brings uh, Bechira into question, right? when I say into question, I mean starts doubting whether there's such a thing as Bechira and gets into predetermination and all these things. It's not an apicursus, it's not a non-belief, it's literally undoing God's work. God's work, his purpose in creation was to be able to bestow good for people who choose to do good. And when a person says you have no choice, you don't have free will, you're a robot, they are killing the very purpose for which God created the world. And that's why the Rabbana Shalola, when he talks about Amalek in yesterday's Pasha Bashala, he tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Mulcham al-Hashem ba-Molek mitor this war will never end. I will fight Amolik in every single generation because I created a world so that men would have free choice, so that men would understand that the guf and the neshama combination means that the neshama has to take control of the guf through Bechira and elevate the guf. And when you do that, there's a tremendous schar for you. And the Rabbi Shalom says, that's why I created the world uh, that's why the world was created. And the Dastavunos told us that, and the Ramchal told us that in Dastavunos, the attack on Bechira is not an attack on a concept. It's an attack on the very purpose of creation. The central, the central, uh, the centrality of the concept of Bechira in all of the system is uh, being destroyed by such people, Chas Rav Hutna, <coughs> in the handout on the left side of the page, called this Avi Avois HaTumma. It's the worst kind of Tumma of our generation, is this idea of predetermination. People really don't have choices, and you may think you have choices, but you don't really have choices. Everything's been predetermined. We understand where this takes us. People, once they believe that there's everything's predetermined, they don't feel much responsible for what they do, because look, this is how I was born, this is how I was going to be. And we understand, we talked about this, my putting is writing it <coughs> before, before even all this happened. This whole idea that gays are born gays and that transgenders are born because God made a mistake, he gave them, he made a man a woman, a woman a man, all these things that people are born this way, 
uh, is a kfira. And it's not just a kfira, it, it eats away and it attacks the very, very system for which HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world. So now, what does this exactly have to do with Amalek? Okay, so Rafutna develops this idea on the right side of the page. We, in the, in Shear, uh, based filler, we read this Pachad Yitzchak several times, and because of its uh, importance in understanding our day and the attack on Bechira in the Tekufa of Mashiach, Tzitkenu, Shiyovay, Berotz, Nashem, Mamish today, we're going to explain it once again. In the first paragraph, our footnote opens up with the story of Shaul Agag. Shaul didn't kill Agag, and the ramification of that with the birth of Haman, etc. <clears throat> Agag is finally killed by Shmuel Hanavi. What? How is it described? It says. <clears throat> If you take a look at the end of the second line on the right side, the Pasuk says, Vayomer Shmuel, Hagishu Eli es Agag Melech Amolik. Shmuel said, bring out Agag, the king of Amolik, bring him before me. Vayelech Elav Agag Ma'adanot. And that's the word that Rafutna focuses on here, Ma'adanot. And Agag came out and appeared before Shmuel Hanovi, Ma'adanot. What does the word Ma'adanot mean? So let's take a step back before we define Ma'adanot and talk about uh, this, uh, the concept that we repeat many times, especially in the Yeshaya Shir. The Gemara Megillah and Afyudal, it says that there were 48 male Nevi'im and seven female, female Nevi'im. And then Gemara asks, uh, learns out from a post that there were hundreds of thousands of Jewish Nevi'im. And again, I, I say this well, whenever we say this Gemara, there are no Nevi'im today. There hasn't been a Navi since Malachi. Malachi died about 40 years into the second base Hamikdash, approximately. The second base Hamikdash stood its last 380 years without a Navi, and there hasn't been a Navi since then. We have prophecies from our Nevi'im, that prophecy will again return be, be, as part of the process of Mashiach and the Ahrus Hayom. We don't have Nevi'im. But the Gemara asks, how can you say there are only 48 Nevi'im and seven female Nevi'im if the Pasuk seems to indicate there are hundreds of thousands? So Gemara says, Nevu'a A prophecy that's required for all time there's something to learn out from it for every generation. Rebbein Shalom told the Navi, write this down. Navua that wasn't required for every generation. It could have been a personal matter. Somebody came to a Navi, as was prevalent in those days. The Ramban tells us this in Pasha's Bichu Kosai. It was prevalent in those days. A person who got sick. He went to a Navi. He said, exactly what is the sickness due to? And many times a Novi would be able to say, you were nichshul in this Aveyu or this Aveyu or this, and you have to do tshuva for this, etc. So those kind of Nabuas, these personal Nabuas or community Nabuas or other types of Nabuas that had no lesson for it for all time, the Rebbein didn't tell the Novi to write it down. Therefore, that which we have written down, it's because HaKadosh Baruch Hu told the Novi to write it down. So here we have an event. And the Rabbanu Shalom tells the Navi to write down the following. Agag appeared before you, and he appeared before you ma'adanot. This is not a word that's selected out of nowhere. If this story is written down, and it's such a particular, uh, uh, particular about how he walked out, which we'll see in a minute, that means that this is something that we need to know for all generations. One shot of Madanot is Miloshen Idun, La'aden. He walked out um, like um, very proud, 
Mu'udan. He was very like proud like a peacock. He was walking like shoulders up. He was very proud of himself. The other shot of Madanot comes from the word Kivalim, chains. He was brought out in chains before Shmuel. So we seem to have the same Hebrew word describing Agag being brought out in front of Shmuel. One seems to indicate he's walking out shoulders up proud, and one seems to indicate he's walking out as a captive chained. So Rafutner writes, Kol mishali bay patuach lekras hanahora hashafas livrei nevi'a emes. We're now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines on the top. It's like we're the point that looks like there's a break in the page. There's some blank space there. Anybody that un has an open heart to understand the flow of the words of Nevi'im, then understands wh why does why do we need to know whether he walked out as a peacock, proud as a peacock, or he walked out in chains. The point is Shmuel said, bring out Agag in front of me, and Shmuel killed him. Lamanaf Gamina, what's it a difference to me that at that time he walked out shoulders high, he walked out in chains. So Rafa says, anybody that has a feel, his heart is open to the words of Navi and understands that these words are very important because these words are written down to tell me this event and to tell me the particulars of this event because I need to understand it for future generations. Ella Rafutna says, Shanagula Kanle Nenu. What the Rebbe Shalom is telling the Navi to describe for us here is the same way Shmuel Hanavi was about to wipe out, kill Agag. The Rebbe Shalom wants us to read this passage and understand that this is what a Molek is going to look like when Klal Yisrael comes to annihilate them from the world. To be Yotze the Mitzvah in Parshas Kiseitze, Parshas Zohar, which we're going to read in a couple of weeks in Yetz Hashem. Timcha Ezeich Ramolik Mitachas Hashemayim Lo Tishka. They are to be annihilated. The picture of Agag being killed by Shmuel is the picture we need to keep in mind for what it will look like. When Klal Yisrael from Hev Yemenu annihilates Amalek. And this is how Rav Hutner explains it, and I'll explain it outside. And I always give the same marshal, the same little story. Lubling is sitting at a table, at the opposite end of the table is Ruve, and they're having a nice conversation. And the conversation turns to the question of. Uh, God and man. And Lubling says to Ruvain, you should know that God controls the whole world. He created the world. He's the absolute sovereign of the world. Nothing happens unless he wants it to happen. He's in complete, absolute control. There's nothing outside God's control. Ruvain pops up at the other side of the table and says, one second, Lubling, I don't agree with you. God created the world. And ultimately, God's, and God is the sovereign of the world. And ultimately, God controls the world. But man has Bechira. And after all, man has freedom of choice to do things, and God really doesn't interfere in his free choice. I say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Reuben, you're not Bechiris. How can you say that God controls everything except that I have Bechira and God doesn't control me. What are you talking about? Are you saying that I am outside of God's control? And Ruben says, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. You are gonna make choices in your life, Lublin, and you're gonna be responsible for those choices, and you will not be able to come to God later and say, God, you made me do it, because God didn't make you do it. You are in your own control. I say, Ruvain, I heard enough from you. I never want to talk to you again. You're not Bikairis. How can you say such a thing that God doesn't control everything? How can you say there's an exception? So Ruvain finally says, Lublin, it's a Gemara. The Gemara says in Brochus and Megillah, Hakol Bidei Shamayim, Chutz Meira Shamayim. Very famous Gemara. Chutz, Hakol Bidei Shamayim, everything is controlled by heaven. Chutz, except Meira Shamayim. 
accept a God, a person's God-fearing nature. If you want to fear God, if you're showing the Torah mitzvahs, that's up to you. If you don't want to, that's also up to you. Listen to the Gemara looping, Ruben says. It says, Do you hear looping? It says, chutz, 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 chutz. It says there's an exception to God's ultimate control, and that is man's Bechir. Before we heard the Gemara, <clears throat> a person that doesn't know better, you take, a poll, you take a poll of people who don't know better that listening to this conversation, they say, hey, look, we're, we're Torah Dika people. We believe God controls the world. He created the world. He's the sovereign. He controls the world. Lublin is right. What's this business where there's an exception to God's control? What's Ruben talking about? And without deeper thought, I would win the poll. People agree with me. A very from idea. Absolutely right. God controls everything and don't give me exceptions. But Lamaisa, I'm wrong. Lamaisa, I'm the Apikaris if Rechas Vashon said something like that. Because there is Bechira. And the Gemara says, So our Futna says that this description of Agag being brought out right before he's killed. These two definitions of Madanot live side by side. They're two sides of the same coin. Picture this. A person's in chains. A person in chains is symbolic of what? He's being held hostage. He's a captive. He has no choices. He does what he's told to do. He's in chains. He's chained. He has no freedom. He's chained. He has no freedom. And at the same time, this person, Agag, is walking around with his shoulders up and proud. In other words, our footnote says, we have a tziu, we have a picture of a human being who's the king of Amalek, and he's walking shoulders high, and he's very proud of the fact that he's in chains. In other words, Agag, the king of Amalek, is a symbol of a person who walks shoulders high and he's proud to say to the world, I am in chains, I have no freedom. God has shackled me from the time I was born and guess what, I'm proud to say it. Not only am I proud to say it, I'm from it and you Jews, because you Jews have this crazy idea that God controls everything except there's Bechira and you got, you got it all wrong, Jewish people. You don't understand. We're from here in Amalek. God controls everything. And I'm proud to say that I'm chained, that I have no freedom. I'm proud to say to the world because when I say it, I'm, I'm, really, I'm, really, uh, I'm really serving Hashem. I'm bringing a message to the world that we're all chained. We're all captive. We're all shackled. None of us have freedom because that's the way God made us. And God controls everything. Ay, 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 what a full message to the world. But this very from message to the world, like so many other from messages to the world that have no basis, actually is destructive. It destroys the very system that God put into place of Bechira, for Hatova, for Schar. It destroys that whole system. And that's what they want. They want to sound so good. And we all know that, that there are certain things that there's a saying that sounds too good to be true. There's a point where things sound so good, where all that so good is covering up something so devious underneath it that it's a manipulation, it's a pure deception what's really going on underneath. And Amalek is a deceptive, it's a deception. We're from, God controls everything. Underneath there is the destruction of God's whole system. And the more people that God, bought, bought, that God forbid, buy into this nonsense, the more God's world and his system, Hashem, gets destroyed. So the more the system brought into gays are born gays and lesbians are born lesbians, v'cholo, v'cholo, and God made a mistake with transgenders and they have no freedom of choice. He was born a woman. He needs to, he needs to have a surgery so he can be a woman. Otherwise, that's the only way he'll get his freedom. Otherwise, he's shackled in a man's body. These are words you hear. He's shackled in a man's body or she shackled in a woman's body. This is the undermining of the whole system God created. 
So it's a Muhammad Hashem Bamolik Mitoito. Those people who walk around proud like a peacock and tell you that you're shackled and chained, you have no freedom of joys, they're destroying God's system. And that's Amolik. That's what Amalek wants to do to the world. All of this is Amalek. <clears throat> At the end of Pasha's Kiseitse, where the Rabboni Shalom, yesterday we read about the Maisa Amalek, when Amalek came and attacked us as soon as we left Mitzrayim. <clears throat> At the end of Kiseitse, Rakadish Baruch gives us the mitzvah to remember to wipe Amalek out. The Pasik says there, Vayazanu Bacho Kalan Asher Kalan Necheshalom Acharechavat Oyev Yegea. Rashi there says, Shahoya Metamam Bemishkav Zacha. The Amalekim try to institute in Klal Yisrael during this physical war with the Jewish people. There was a spiritual war. They tried to bring homosexuality into the culture of the Jewish people. It's a Rashi in part at the end of Pashas Kisei say, show you metamum b'mishkav zacha. There's a maral. We once spoke about it at a base fellowship. There's a maral about why this is so important to to bring homosexuality into the world. But this is the destruction, the attempt to de destroy God's system in the world. What's a man? What's a woman? These most basic things and what's schar, and what's oinish, and there is no schar oinish because everything's predetermined and you have no bechira. This is the undermining of God's purpose in creating the world. <clears throat> so as Rafutna says many times, bechira is, sometimes he calls it a matana, he calls it a segula. It's a holy thing, bechira. <clears throat> when the Ramchal talks so much about the Chira, the Guf and the Neshama, the, uh, the Neshama's ability to lift up the Guf beyond, its, beyond what the Guf is, this is the system that the Rebbe Shalom created, that we as Jews understand it, we understand it through the Torah. And to protect this wonderful system through which we are Bechira and through which we get Schar, we get Olam Haba. In order to protect this system, we have to protect the idea of Bechira. When we hear this nonsense about it was predetermined, people are born like that, they can't do anything about it. This is a direct attack, not on an idea. It's a direct attack on the very system that God created for our benefit, for our toy. It sounds nice. It sounds good. It makes people not responsible for what they do. He was born like that. Have some Rachmanis on him. He can't do anything about it. Rachmanis has its place, and there's a way to deal with these people with Rachmanis. But I'm not just leaving it to... Don't make a mistake that I'm only talking about the gay community. I'm talking about transgenders. This goes beyond that. This whole idea of predetermination. And there are religions. There's, there's parts of Christianity that absolutely adopted predetermination. There's nothing you can really do. We Jews hold on to the system of Bechira. And as we come closer and closer to Pasha Zohar, we understand that the Rebbe Shalom is telling us, you must remember, it's a mitzvah to remember what Amalek wanted to do. Now, Jewish people have, have had many enemies. We don't have a mitzvah, remember what, um, remember what the other seven nations uh, did to you. We don't have a specific mitzvah of remember what Mitzrayim did to you. We have a mitzvah to remember that God took us out of Mitzrayim, but there's not a mitzvah to every day remember that they killed our children. It's a mitzvah twice a day to remember God saved us from Mitzrayim. Amalek, the Rambam describes the mitzvah of Mechias Amalek is to remember what they did, to remember that they attacked us and what they did when they attacked us. To be Ma'oyer Eva, the Rambam says we should ignite within ourselves a hate for this kind of thing. Now, this is not a passive thing. This I must create a passion of a hate because this is not an idea. This is the central theme for which God created the world. And these people want to attack God's very purpose in creation, which we will not accept ever as Shoyimrei Taira Mitzvahs. <clears throat> those here that need Yeshua say, I have Yeshua. Those here that need a Refua, should have Refua. Those here that need Nechama, should have Nechama. Those here that need a Baruch, should have Baruch. As Baruch Shalom should send Baruch, as Yeshua's Nechama's Refua is 
to all a klal Yisrael. The Baruch Shalom is the only one that can do it. The Echad Yochad of Yuchad, we do our Yishtadlus. The Baruch Shalom bench is not Yishtadlus, but it can't happen without the Baruch Shalom. And if these things have to happen, they only happen when he wants it to happen, how he wants it to happen, if it's going to be through a shliach, through the shliach that the Rebbeinu Shalom wants it to happen through. And when we understand this, think about it, internalize it, live it, we're doing what the Ramchal calls the Gili Hayichud, when we all donate that Gili Hayichud to this great Gili Hayichud, that's the job of Klal Yisrael, we bring it to the critical mass where HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'Nsen B'Ritzayin HaShem Amish today in Mashiach to finish the Gili Hayichud so we can go to Yerushalayim, build a base on Mikdash, give Machzis HaShekel, bring the Korban, we should all please be careful, keep ourselves healthy and well. The last two base yais of the Chaysha Mishpat, the last Beragoy of Chaysha Mishpat, and avoid this Hashem, it's a mitzvah to keep yourself healthy and well. Makabuk Neif Mashiach Tzitkenu, to be able to be Shayim and Taiwan Mitzvah's healthy, Basimcha, Batub Levov. The Rosh Hashanah give us the Seichel to do the right things in this difficult, chaotic time, to do the right things that are right, not just for us, but right for our neighbors and other people in the street. We have to think about other people. I've said this many times. I believe one of the nasionists going on in Corona is Mamish the Shalom is testing Jews. He's testing Jews. I want to see if you can care about another Jew. Can you care about the welfare, the health of another Jew? Or do you have Mishigasin in your head? Can you protect another Jew? Can you do the things to make sure another Jew remains healthy? <clears throat> and that's a Havas Yisrael. It's just a plain, simple Havas Yisrael to do simple things to protect your neighbor, to protect other people in the street, to protect other people that are in the shop. The Bar Shalom <clears throat> should watch over us every year there's a whole set, there's a whole list of Tehillim for women, pregnant women, women who just gave birth. And the Rosh Hashanah should send them all before Shalema, the Karev Mamish, and we should see the Gula Shalema from Eira. I believe uh, it's available if anybody's interested in the Tehillim list. Somebody sent it to me, Eira Shop, as the Tehillim list for pregnant women and or women who just gave birth, who never never have COVID, and for Shlema, I can forward you the list. We should hear Basuas, Tavis, and Shuas, Nechamais for us, for our families, for Kali Yisrael, Mamish today. Zaygazunt, have a wonderful day. Tomorrow we begin 9.30 with Nesech Deshavias. Zaygazunt.